Disclaimer. Our team strongly condemns these players for such an attitude. Our video aims to show current and future young players what kind of teammates they shouldn't be. Dota has not the best function. It reveals the worst character traits in people. The match length in games and the dependence on teammates can bring anyone out of a psychological balance. Pro players differ little from ordinary players, but among them are those who stand out for their toxicity. Well, the first part of the most toxic pro players in Dota 2 became very popular, over 150,000 viewers. You are amazing, so we could not miss your desire to see the second part. This list is going to be filled with almost all of your suggestions. Hello there, it's the Good Game Republic channel. Today you will learn about another 5 most toxic professional players in Dota 2. We are Ukrainians and we try to make our content better and better, so we are asking you for help. Write your ideas and suggestions about our staff and us in the comments. Hit the sub button, turn on the notification bell, and like the video. Get comfortable, because we're starting right now. GPK we simply could not do a list of toxics without a Russian player. When Danil GPK Skutin, one of Eastern Europe's top young stars, started playing for Virtus Pro in 2020, people began to notice more and more often his love for trash talk. He used to like flaming his teammates in the pub, smashing items and standing in shadow amulet and surrendering. But after several VP victories at top championships, his sense of self-importance skyrocketed. GPK began to regularly get into the compilations of moments where he humiliated other pubbers or low-level pro players. In that VP roster with an epileptic and a save, all the players liked to do trash talk. But it was GPK who more than others appeared in the headlines. You know, just pay attention. It's fine. GPK is just a piece of shit in pubs. He's literally a piece of shit. He's super fucking toxic, condescending, arrogant, destroys his items, literally everything. Okay, he's, he's the whole package. His last toxic moment happened in early October. During one of the pubs on the Asian server, he got into a fight with the T1 carry, Gabby. He called the Asian region pathetic, Asian teams weak, and Gabby a worthless player. He also made a promise that he would rape paparazzi, extreme gaming midder. But the icing on this cake of bullshit is the abominations about the coach of his own team, FNG. Maybe it's connected with the previous trash talk between FNG and GPK. This happened during regional qualification for the Stockholm Major for Eastern Europe, which was held instead of the league. The reason for the format change was the invasion of Russia into Ukraine. In that match on the first map that GPK and Co. lost, FNG wondered how many frags one of the most talented midders of Eastern Europe made. We will answer you. Just one. However, outsiders then made a comeback and won the match 2-1. to one. But it didn't help them. GPK's teammate Pure turned out to be a fan of Rashism and drew a Z on the minimap in the next match, due to which the team was disqualified from the qualification. Seb. You all know who Sebastian Seb Debs is. Can you do it here? He's at half Seb! Seb gets the goal! He gets the goal! Two time champion of the international, one of the best coaches in Dota history, who was able to tame Anna's difficult character. We talked about how he made OG an invincible team in another video, the link to which will appear on your screen. But today we will talk about Seb's definitely not champion behavior. Huge thanks to you, who reminds us of his toxicity. In the past, Seb often splashed out his anger at his teammates in pubs. In 2019, he was burned by one of the Russian high MMR pub players. After Sebastian 
Ben didn't get Aegis, he chose not to mince words and called his Storm Spirit teammate and all the other Russian players Russian whores and guys who would sell their mothers. After the invasion of Russian troops into Ukraine, it is hard not to agree with him, but this situation happened a month before the major in Moscow, where OG was one of the participants. This incident led to a great barrage of criticism towards the club and the player. Even Solo, the legendary captain of VP, was outraged by the behavior of the Frenchman. The conflict ended with a settlement of the matter with Valve and a public apology from Seb. But if you think that this situation has taught Sebastian something, you are completely wrong. In a year, Seb unleashed the toxic beast yet again. After attacking one of his teammates in a pub, he declared that even his dog would be smarter if given 10 minutes to learn. You said one hour of my time. You're wasting one hour of my time. My time is valuable, not like yours. A nice pick, bro. You're tilted because you lock 60 my money and you pick Paz one. Well. What if I pick Rubik? We rape the lane or what? Top tower is under attack. You don't even know what to pick against ET, dude. You're a fucking animal. Do I pick 60 me? rank, man. You know. I can teach my fucking pet animal to be smarter. I need like 10 minutes with it. In the professional scene, Seb has shown his toxic character many times. In general, they along with No Tail made OG one of the most unpleasant opponents at the International. The champion squad of OG was very fond of spamming audio lines during matches to put opponents out of balance. He has chosen to go find this guy. <laughs> Some esports talents even asked Valve to fix this abuse. Valve, in their own style, decided to simply increase the cooldown after two uses of audio lines, which, however, was only a partial solution to the problem. The following content is blocked. To unlock it, you have to share the video on your Twitter or Facebook page. We'll give you some time. PPD Peter PPD Dagger, also known as Salt King, he is probably one of the most mentioned names in the comments in the previous parts, but not the most. He is the world champion and one of the best captains in Dota history, but also a pub crawler. In ranked matches, it is very easy to throw him off balance. Why am I so toxic? I'm not toxic at all, man. <laughs> me? Toxic? Are you fucking kidding me? Peter starts to get angry, curse, and make salty jokes about his opponents or even teammates. It was after such pranks that the nickname Salt King stuck to him. Hey, dumbass fucking Willow, buy some fucking sentries, you useless piece of shit. PPD himself is often ironic about his alternative nickname on his YouTube channel. One of the most popular series has become Salty Adventures, where his salty comments about esports personalities are collected. Yeah. Valve is not going to magically start to like me at this point, so... Yeah, who gives a shit? They put shit... I, th I think you'd be surprised, man. I think if you put your head down and worked hard... No, you go ahead, Grant. No, oh no, no, my god, Peter! Oh, it's fine. <laughs> Didn't you really just say that to me? As soon as Peter appears on any stream, a portion of Salt Shakers is sent in the Twitch chat. That's how the PJ Salt emoticon became a personal symbol of PPD. During his professional career, PPD wasn't a good boy. When he was the captain of Evil Geniuses, he ruled the team with a strong hand. The community was very shocked when Aoi left the team immediately after winning the TI-5. Later, due to a flurry of criticism, Peter Peter released a blog where he described Aoi as a professional in the game, but a complicated person outside of it. Peter called the former teammate an unbalanced personality, as it created a toxic atmosphere in the team. PPD also mentioned that Aoi had problems with communication. Today we understand that Peter was at least a devious, complicated person in the team who was PPD. He was tolerated for quite a long time until he left EG in 2017. After that, he was strongly criticized by the main star of that roster of the team, Sumail. According to him, after they won the International 2015, PPD began to practice less and less and tilt after each loss, which led to a toxic atmosphere in the team. Peter didn't tolerate insults toward him and also told about Sumail's lazy character. According to PPD, while the team was working on strategies, Sumail was watching wrestling. When EG started having problems with the results and they kicked Universe, Peter couldn't resist and took another stab at the Pakistani superstar, suggesting that Sumail and Arteezy should be kicked instead of the godlike universe. Funnick. 
Eastern Europe as a region is very famous for its toxic players who like to shoot the breeze. Similar to their aggressive style of play in the game and outside of the game, players from post-Soviet countries can also beat each other up, even if they're on the same team. Glib Funnik Lepatnikov is no exception to these rules. Not only is he known for his uncanny resemblance to the famous actress Chloe Grace Moritz, he is also known as one of those who played in the legendary Navi roster on the third TI-3. For the next two years, Funnik played for the Navi with variable success, but this did not prevent him from criticizing the organizers of the DAC 2015, one of the best tournaments of that season, in a very brazen manner. What to say about the organization of the tournament? It's a complete It's not just in that video, he used the worst language to call out the Chinese organizers as unprofessionals. Despite all of this, in 2016, Funnik left Navi and according to him, became disillusioned with the community of post-Soviet countries. Instead of learning from his failures and improvising, Glib insisted that it was Eastern Europe and its esports community that caused him to stop winning. Later, he held a legendary stream where he factually dissected this rotten esports community and gave us tons of memes. The first is big bosses. Прокутлемент. Вы сделали правильный выбор два года назад, когда отреклись от этого конченого места. Вы красавчики, вы умны, и это делает вас боссами, боссами доты. According to Funnik, Kiroki and Poppy are big bosses. They, in his opinion, quickly realized that the EEU sports scene was dying and returned to Western Europe. The second is the legendary 1% of Eastern European players, among whom Funnik considered himself, who are true professionals. The other 99% are children, non-professionals, and clowns. Lota, ты, PPD, Xiao8. Это то же самое я. Все это боссы Dota. Нас? один процент, а вас девяносто девять. He confirmed these statistics with the so-called lunar facts. Funnik called Lost, his former Navi teammate, the best connoisseur of lunar facts. Separately, he talked a lot about art style, whom he considered a traitor. Ванечка, человек настолько слабый и человек настолько самоуверенный в себе, но при этом по факту Он не делает ничего, он только ездит на спинах и пытается подцепиться к спинке, которая According to him, when he helped Vanya return to the Navi in 2015, instead of training, Artstyle ran around restaurants and drank 300 grams of vodka with cherry juice. Later, already, during another stream, Artstyle responded to Funnik. He offered Glib to play with his dick. Как ты относишься к Фаннику, вопрос? К Фаннику? Ну смотри, вот, вы сейчас, конечно, не видите, у меня веб-камеры нет, но вот есть мой хуй, короче, и рот Фаннику, грубо говоря, берем, так имитируем. И вот, короче, так получается, мой хуй, как бы, он входит в его рот, и он плавно, вначале не спеша, а потом резко начинает хуярить его, блядь, голову, это пиздец. Квин. Quinn, Quinn Callahan, also known as CCNC, is perhaps the most toxic esports player from the North American region. In the previous part, we unfairly missed him. Huge thanks to you, who showed us our mistakes. Quinn's long tongue is the stuff of Reddit legends, and his never-ending battle with haters is worthy of becoming a ballad about what not to do when you become successful in Dota. Here's what, for example, a former pro player from North America, and now a very famous streamer, Banana Slam Jamma, said about him. I mean, I would be more in fight with that. Like, I personally, like, to call people out, I don't think CCNC's behavior in pubs is alright. Like, I don't think that shit's acceptable. He's, like, supposed to be one of the top five mid players in the North American region. Supposed to be, quote unquote, like a role model. Like, he's on a pro team. He gets paid to play this game. That kind of shit ain't acceptable. Like, it's so annoying. I've had him in my games, like, three or four times where he's just like, I'm AFK, end. Game's not over. Like, obviously, it's grim. But like, if people that are ranked 20 do it, then rank 200s are gonna do it too. And then if rank 200s do it, rank 500s to 1000s are gonna do it. And it's just gonna, you know, spiral all the way down through the wars. It, it really does start with like the top tier of Dota. Another spicy situation occurred in November 2020 when the leader of Quincy Crew met with Chris Luck. Beast Coast's member in one of the pubs on the mid lane. The reason for their fight was a tip from the Peruvian at the beginning of the game, but the tirade about, you are rank 100 in North America and your team has not even won a single tournament, not one. We have won eight. 
in a row. And meet me in the finals, you trash can. Quinn let out near the end of the match when it became obvious that he had lost it. Such behavior was unworthy for a pro player of the top level, and therefore, the goddess of fate decided to pay him back. Quincy Crew lost in the grand final of Dota Summit 13 to Eternal Envy Team and ended their winning streak. But it's one thing how Quinn behaves with other high-ranked pubbers who themselves love to trash talk, and it's another thing when CCNC simply disrespects its fans. There's even a pretty popular thread on Reddit called, I was once a Quinn fan until I watched his stream. In it, the author says that he considered Quinn to be one of the best mid players until he watched his stream. There he saw a big man behaving like a spoiled teenager. It is not surprising that almost all fans of CCNC turn to the dark side and become its haters. But Quinn, judging by what he says, is even more fired up by it, causing him to have a sports passion. When he succeeds, like in the qualifiers for the 11th International, where the Sonics, aka Quincy crew, won and advanced to the group stage of the World Cup. After the grand final, Quinn was interviewed, where the American chose not to mince words. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for being you. You may always make a great interview. So uh, good luck at TI. Look forward yep. to seeing you there. Haters suck my nuts. <laughs> of course. And a classic Quinn. Well, guys, that's it. Did we miss something? If we did, let us know in the comments below. Like the video, subscribe to the Good Game Republic channel, and hit the notification bell. See you next time.